Now, I have the awesome honor of standing before you to introduce a man who has not only celebrated women, but who has trusted and invested in them. A man who knows that if we were ever able to restore civility back into this country, that it will be women that will lead the way. <laughs> Ladies and friends, without further ado, the chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Tom Perez. All right. Good afternoon, my friends. Give it up for Wakinya. As we say in my house, Wakinya's got game. I'm also proud to be here with my oldest daughter, Amalia, a senior in college. She's here. And you know, I want to say something about my friend Wakinya because. Well, Kenya spent a lot of time out of the office in the past few months. In fact, she spent almost a month down in Alabama helping Doug Jones become the United States Senator from Alabama. And thanks to African American women, 98% of whom voted for Doug Jones. 98% the backbone of the Democratic Party. Doug Jones is now Senator Doug Jones. And before that, Wakinya was in Virginia, organizing up and down Virginia, from Hampton Roads to Northern Virginia, helping people up and down the ticket send a message to America that when we organize, when we field great candidates, and when we lead with our values, we win, folks. That's what we did. So thank you, Wakinya, for your work. I must tell you, it's a beautiful sight to look out here today. And I'll tell you one more thing. If, if the Congress, if the White House, if the governorships across America, if the legislatures across America had more women like I see here today, we'd be a much better America. There's no doubt about it. I asked, John, I, I asked President Trump and Sean Spicer to come over and count the crowd, but they didn't want to come. But no matter what they said, this is what an actual crowd looks like. We're all here for the same reason. We understand that our democracy is at risk. We understand that a year ago, Donald Trump and Mike Pence were sworn in and immediately began the, turning the clock back on women's rights, workers' rights, LGBT rights, immigrant rights, and our fundamental values of inclusion, opportunity, and tolerance that have always made America great. They nominated a Supreme Court justice who has repeatedly sided against women in reproductive health cases, against workers, in employment cases. They embolden Republican governors in Kentucky and Texas who are hell-bent on closing abortion clinics and taking away a woman's constitutional right to make her own health decisions. They halted President Obama's equal pay rule. They halted an effort that we led at the Labor Department to make sure that companies that engaged in sexual harassment were held accountable. And they have tried again and again to repeal the Affordable Care Act. You know what, my friends? This doesn't simply affect women. It affects all of us. When a woman has to choose between her family and her job, that hurts all of us. When a single mom has to choose between paying for child care and paying for rent, that hurts all of us. When a woman's career suffers because she's forced out of the workforce because of sexual harassment, that hurts all of us. And that, my friends, women, everyone, that is why we must all fight to fix it. And I'm here to say thank you to the women across America who have led America back to its greatness. You responded by organizing. You responded by putting your name on the ballot. And as you know, more women are running for office than ever before. 
in the great Commonwealth of Virginia. The pundit said we couldn't win more than four or five seats in the state house of delegates. Well, we won 15 seats in the mail in the Virginia House of Delegates. 15. And but for a coin flip, we would have won a 16th. And those 15 former House of Delegates members in Virginia are all men, replaced by 11 women, 11 strong women, including the first two Latinas in Virginia history, the first Asian American in Virginia's history, the first openly transgender woman in Virginia's history. They are our present, they are our future. And Virginia is not the only place where it's happened. And here's why it's happened. Because you've marched, you've spoken up, you've spoken up to protect health care, including the right of women to make their own choices about their bodies and their health. You're fighting for dreamers and will continue to fight for dreamers every day. You're standing up against policies that make the rich richer while make the, making the rest of us pay. And you are leading a powerful revolution with Me Too and the Time's Up movement. And I'm here to say, time's up for Republicans. You know what, folks? Make no mistake about it. Women will be the reason this administration ends on January 19th, 2020. You know, the founding fathers get a lot of credit, but it's the marching mothers and daughters that continue to make this country great. Thank you for doing that. I am so proud to be here with my daughter Amalia. You know what? It is absolutely time to end the practice of giving our sisters and my daughter and my other daughter less options than their dreams demand. We must fight for their futures. We will continue to fight for their futures. And you know what, folks? I want you to keep one number in mind as we move forward. 290. There are 290 days until the November election in 2018. And that means there are 290 days until the Democrats take over the House of Representatives and the Democrats take over the Senate and the Democrats win governor's races across this country and the Democrats win state legislative races across this country. 290 days, my friends. But you know what? The arc of the moral universe is indeed long. And it does bend toward justice. But it never, ever, ever bends on its own. We must bend it together. And we must bend it together by understanding that we are living in unprecedented times. What is going on as we speak right now is quite literally unprecedented in our nation's history. Never has one party controlled the White House, the United States Senate, and the United States House of Representatives, and then shut down the federal government. That is what just happened. That is incompetence. That is immoral. And that is wrong. But that is what they did. But you know what? There's an equally important shutdown that we must respond to. And that is this president and this Republican Congress's effort to shut down basic American values of opportunity for everyone, inclusion, making sure that every zip code counts, making sure that every child is gifted and talented and is able to realize those gifts and talents. And how do we take back America? We do it the same way we have always done it. We organize and we vote and we lead with our values. So my friends, I say to you this, if you believe that people who work a full-time job can live a stress-free life and should live a stress-free life, you should organize and vote for Democrats. If you believe 
that anyone who works a full-time job should not have to live in poverty. You should organize and mobilize and vote with Democrats. If you believe that a woman's right to choose is a fundamental right that we should never interfere with, and it is part of women's economic empowerment, you should organize, mobilize, and vote for Democrats. If you believe that health care is a right for all and not a privilege for a few, you should organize, mobilize, and vote for Democrats. If you believe that the right to vote is our most sacred vote and that voter suppression is wrong, you should organize, mobilize, and vote for Democrats. If you believe that our dreamers are every bit as American as my American-born daughter, you should organize, mobilize, and vote for Democrats. If you believe that our Secretary of Education ought to believe in public education, you should organize, mobilize, and vote for Democrats. If you believe that our EPA administrator ought to get a tutorial on climate change, then you should organize, mobilize, and vote for Democrats. If you, if you believe that every single person in this country should have access to safe drinking water, if you believe that we should build more schools and not more prisons, if you believe that every single person is entitled to a second chance, you should organize, mobilize, and vote for Democrats. If you believe that our first female president should not be Mother Russia, you should organize, mobilize, and vote for Democrats. That's what it's about, folks. We've got to take a page out of John Lewis's playbook, and that's what we did in 2017. We caused good trouble. We organized. We mobilized. And we won elections. We won elections in Oklahoma. We won elections in Iowa. We won elections in New Jersey, in Virginia, in Alabama, and elsewhere. And in 2018, we will continue that blue wave, but only if we do it together. Let's bend that arc together. Let's cause good trouble together. Let's pass the Equal Rights Amendment together. Let's go victorious together. Thank you very much. Keep up the great work and commit to vote every single election, every single day. Thank you.